baby, J Rock is here. It is time for the great one, the YouTube People's Channel. Oh, to do another reaction, baby. We are back, and we're about to check out a video to figure out exactly how LA Night, or should I say, LA Night, yeah, became the megastar. Hi, J Rock, and come back. What is happening in in, in in with the millions? <laughs> and millions of J-Rock fans from all over the world. Uh, J-Rock is here. J-Rock says this. We're about to check out this video on how LA Knight became the mega star. L.A. Knight. Yeah. All right, make sure you lay up the smack it down on that subscribe button. Yeah. Hit that like button. Yeah. And hit that thanks button. Yeah. All right. Come on, baby. Showtime. Yeah! In the past year, many WWE superstars have seen their popularity skyrocket underneath the rule of Triple H. Yeah. Sami Zayn has become a main event player off the back of his feud with Roman Reigns. Yeah. Seth Rollins, while already being oh. over, soared to new heights by capturing the World Heavyweight title. Hell, even the Judgment Day has turned into one of the most dominant and over factions oh, in the company after have. its first few months of questionable booking. Yeah. But none of them have gotten as organically over as perhaps the WWE's next top the star, Megastar. LA Knight. He's been compared in many ways to The Rock with his promo style and natural charisma, turning him into a must-see attraction for WWE fans. My name is Grisha from Wrestleology, and with Knight's popularity now on the rise, I think it's time we take a look back at LA Knight's career in the WWE to see how the once overlooked talent turned into today's megastar. Also, this video is covering LA Knight's entire WWE run. If you guys want to know more about LA Knight's backstory before the WWE and his days on the indie circuit, make sure to go ahead and leave a comment down below and I'll make that video in the future. But before we get into LA Knight's current day WWE success, we should look back at his time in NXT. No, not his return run, which we'll get into in a little bit, but rather his first stint in the company back in 2013. He was signed to a developmental deal usually used as either enhancement talent or dark match fodder before his release in 2014. This, according to Knight himself, was noted as a professional issue, but because of that release, Knight traveled the independent circuit before making his way to Impact Wrestling as Eli Drake, and there Drake proved just how big of a drop ball he was for WWE by capturing the Impact World title and slowly winning over fans with his charismatic presence on the show. Sure, not too many people were watching Impact at this time, but the fans who were, were watching an artist finally showcase his potential with his promos and catchphrases helping him get over with the fans. And after winning over the fans in both Impact and NWA in 2019, Knight would finally get the call back to WWE. Yeah! And with him finally getting a second chance at success, Knight decided to take it as we all saw at NXT TakeOver Vengeance Day. Here he debuted as a cocky heel with the new ring name LA Knight. He promised, like so many have before him, that he will be the biggest star in NXT. And to help make the fans see just how good Knight can be, he inserted himself straight into the NXT North American Championship scene, stepping up to then champion Johnny Gargano. However, he's not the only one who wanted a shot at the title. The entire mid-card scene of NXT at the time wanted yeah. to leave their mark with the North American Championship. Yeah. Major stars like Bronson Reed, Swerve Scott, and more all saw the title as a launching pad to the main roster and they all went to war for a shot at the championship. On night one of TakeOver Stand and Deliver, LA Knight took part in a six-man gauntlet match with Knight unsuccessful in defeating the eventual winner, Bronson Reed. Sure, Knight might have lost this match, but this spotlight helped Knight to find his footing leading into his first major feud in the company. You see, prior to that match, one of Knight's opponents in Cameron Grimes was in the midst of a character change. Marking himself the richest man in NXT, Cameron would boast about his financial wealth in the stock market, and all these riches attracted the legendary million dollar man Ted DiBiase down to the black and gold brand. Over yeah, a few weeks, every time Cameron would look to buy something shiny, 
DiBiase swooped in to buy something even shinier. Grimes was obviously insulted by this, and tension would build between Grimes and the legend. Meanwhile, during that time, LA Knight would continue to rack up wins before it all came to a head on the May 25th episode of NXT. Knight would interrupt a segment between Ted and Cameron, looking to have DiBiase join him as his guide through NXT. This obviously just infuriated Grimes even more as he decided to wage war with DiBiase's newest right-hand man oh. to take over in your house. But he didn't just want to defeat Knight. No, he also wanted to embarrass DiBiase. So, to add insult to injury, the match saw DiBiase's personalized belt, the million dollar title, hanging above the ring. And after some tense back and forth action, LA Knight climbed the golden ladder to capture his first championship in the company. Once again, Grimes was unsuccessful in one-upping his rival as Knight and DiBiase had left Grimes in a heap on the floor. But with Knight now securing his legacy with a legendary million dollar yeah. championship firmly around his waist, his need for a manager was pretty much over, so he had Tag DiBiase on the first episode following. Yeah, in I remember house. that. After all, with Knight that BFT. Didn't need a mouthpiece, and the partnership between them, while fun, had quickly outlived its usefulness. However, Grimes wasn't satisfied with his loss at In Your House. This so is blurred out for copyright reasons. Knight out of the ring, and with Grimes now fully cementing himself as a good guy with this save, he would heroically look for a rematch with Knight at the Great American Bash. Sadly for Grimes, though, Knight was once again able to pick up the victory in a very convincing fashion. But this defeat was far worse for Grimes as per the stipulation of the match, Grimes would become Knight's personal yeah, butler. His butler. So not only the did new version. Grimes have to lose to LA Knight a second pay-per-view in a row, but he was also forced to comment below if you remember Virgil. Work underneath his rival in humiliating fashion. But this made Grimes more of a nuisance for his rival as this only gave him more opportunities to annoy his now new boss. Whether it's through him accidentally throwing Knight into a pool or swinging a golf club right into his boss's balls, Grimes became an even bigger problem for Knight. Grimes even still had DiBiase there to help him in his schemes, so a rematch was announced. LA Knight agreed to defend the Million Dollar Championship against Cameron Grimes at NXT TakeOver 36 under the condition that if Knight was able to defeat Grimes once again, then Ted DiBiase would have to replace Grimes as Knight's personal butler. This time, however, Knight would end up losing his golden strap to Cameron due to the interference of Ted DiBiase. But following this major loss in both the match and the feud, Knight would return to NXT only to suffer another loss to the debuting next big thing, Braun Breaker. That is before quickly kicking off his feud in NXT with Grayson Waller. While it may have started under less serious circumstances with Knight beating Waller to become the host of the upcoming NXT Halloween Havoc event, the feud quickly became more personal. Knight, through this feud, felt disrespected by Waller's arrival in NXT. Being nearly 40 years old, Knight felt like he had to work hard to get to the WWE, while Waller, a much younger star than Knight, was pretty much handed everything on a silver platter. And perhaps the fans agreed as well, as following Following Grayson Waller's heel turn, Knight would end up turning face that same evening after an attack by Waller. Damn. And following a segment featuring Knight teaming up with some of the other pure babyfaces in NXT like Johnny Gargano and Tommaso Ciampa, his turn toward the light was confirmed. And Knight would actually team up with those same competitors at the upcoming War Games event. Yes. War Games. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the hand-picked future of NXT 2.0 versus the angry veterans who helped build NXT black and gold the years prior. Team NXT 2.0 in Grayson Waller, Braun Breaker, Carmelo Hayes, and Tony D'Angelo went up against LA Knight, Johnny Gargano, Tommaso Ciampa, and Pete Dunne. And after a brutal war inside the War Games cage, it was surprisingly Team NXT 2.0 that walked out the winners following a huge power slam by Braun onto Champa. But this wouldn't be the end of Knight's rivalry with Waller. While Waller continued to make a name for himself by attacking some of WWE's biggest names like Johnny Gargano and AJ Styles, Knight would find himself taken out of action after an assault by Waller. But after a few weeks away, Knight returned to take out his frustrations on Waller, and after a few weeks of pro surrounding Waller's temporary restraining order on LA Knight, the two would finally get their hands on each other at NXT Roadblock in a last man standing match. Sadly though, Knight would lose both in this match and this feud following a huge top rope elbow drop by Waller through both the yes, chest of his opponent and the announcer's table. And Knight would continue his losing ways as his time with NXT was quickly coming to an end. Following his match at Roadblock, Knight would lose his chance at the NXT title following a super kick by 
by the then champion Dolph Ziggler. Yo. This match for the title only looked to anger perhaps the most dominant superstar in NXT. J Rock says this. Dolph Ziggler winning the NXT championship was weird and interesting all at the same time. Weird. Felt weird. Like, this ain't supposed to be happening. But I'm interested. NXT at the time, Gunther. After all, Gunther. in Gunther's defense, why should Knight get a shot at the title when all he's done is lose in NXT? And through this, the two started a feud that lasted just a few weeks, with Knight again suffering a loss during his final match in NXT to the ring general at TakeOver Stand and Deliver. But while many, including LA Knight himself, might have been worried about his future in WWE, fans were left more confused than anything about his next venture. The good news is that he was drafted up to the main roster finally given a chance to shine on the big stage. The bad news is that this came with a repackage. Yeah. Yes, because LA Knight didn't have enough character according to the higher-ups at Titan Towers, Knight was repackaged as a manager named Max Dupree. He would act as the leader of a modeling agency, valuing the looks of guys like Mace and Mansoor above all. And with the addition of Max's kayfabe sister, Maxine Dupree, the group was complete with the name Maximum Male Models. Yeah, someone with as much upside and talent as LA Knight felt a little bit wasted in this position as the group did very little of note for months on end. And on the September 30th episode of SmackDown, Finally. notably after Triple H took charge in the yes. movie's creative, Max left the group behind before quickly being repackaged the following week with his old character in L.A. Knight. However, yeah. Max Dupree was transitioning into the megastar L.A. Knight, an eerie presence would return to WWE. Yes. Yes, after being let go a year prior, Bray Wyatt would make his long-awaited return to the company as he instantly became the hottest star in WWE. Look, J-Rock has said it before and he'll say it again. This feud right here, no doubt in the great one's mind, Bray Wyatt is the bigger star. But in this feud, L.A. Knight outshined him. Sorry, that's just what I feel. L.A. Knight was coming out and he was shining bright. Wyatt was the bigger star, no lie. But L.A. Knight was shining brighter in this feud. Yeah. But many fans were left wondering what Bray would do now that he had come back, and to the shock of many, Bray would decide to turn his attention to LA Knight. After Bray had introduced himself tonight during a backstage interview, LA ran his mouth like usual until Bray nailed him with a headbutt. And this pattern would continue over the next few months. Bray and his new Uncle Howdy partner would continue to try and get in Knight's head only for Knight to continue talking trash. In fact, it felt like Knight would amplify his disrespect every time he was attacked. Whether it was through him parodying yeah. Bray's old <laughs> cult leader gimmick, or just by slapping the unhinged Wyatt in the mouth, the feud even boiled over into involving the now-retired Undertaker at Raw 30, with Taker helping Bray in an attack on Knight in the ring. Finally, the feud would culminate at Royal Rumble 2023, in the now infamously sponsored Mountain Dew Pitch. Yeah, that match. match was... Bray walked down to the ring, covered in glow-in-the-dark paint, as the two men fought in this mixture of darkness and colorful this... lights. In the a regular end, though, match would have been was just able fine. to get the job done, with Knight once again suffering a defeat. However, the action didn't stop once the bell rang, as the two continued their fight over towards the sound stage. There, Bray took down Knight in the mandible claw before the mysterious Uncle Howdy figure launched off the top of the yes. elevated platform through both Knight and the floor below. The area exploded upon impact as Bray watched in delight. I also have a video that I recently made on Bray Wyatt. If you want to go ahead and check it out, it's basically about his entire run in the WWE and what went wrong, essentially. But despite the bizarre end of this, y'all let me know if you want me to check that out. Actually, ended up being a blessing in disguise for Knight. Through this high-profile storyline, Knight was able to get himself more established on SmackDown hey. as well as provide fans with a showcase of his skills. If you hadn't seen him in NXT, then this feud with Bray was really the first taste of what people could expect hey, from him. And while there are feud. many who don't look back on this feud that favorably, there were moments of brilliance from LA Knight here. In yes. fact, in a weird way, Knight kind of carried this rivalry. On 
on his back with his incredible charisma and performance. Despite I mean, Frank easily being one of the most popular superstars in WWE at the start of this feud, by the end, it was Knight who saw his popularity rise as fans got to see what he could really do. And fans would see this over and over and over again. Despite losing seemingly every match for months on end, despite being a heel on SmackDown, Knight's popularity would start to soar due to his natural charisma and mic work. Every week, he would walk down to the ring with more and more fans screaming in support. And in the lead up to the Money in the Bank pay-per-view, Knight was so white hot that fans believed he would end up leaving the show with a Money in the Bank briefcase. And despite playing a major role in the finishing sequence of the bout, it was Damian Priest who would walk out of the ladder match the winner. Which many, including myself, kind of feel like that was probably the wrong move and they should have given it to LA Knight, but we'll have to see what happens. LA Knight is a very fascinating case these days in WWE. Despite constant losses in both NXT and on the main roster, he has still seen his popularity rise everywhere he's gone. Even before Cream his always rise to the WWE top, in 2021, LA Knight was spicing up the independent scene due to his innate charisma. As many fans have pointed out, LA Knight feels like an Attitude Era star brought into the modern day WWE. He has the fan support of Steve Austin, the mic skills of The Rock, and the larger than life charisma of Ric Flair all rolled into one. Is he a bit older? Sure, he's 40 years old. However, you still have guys like AJ Styles still competing like he did a decade prior, and he's 46. So, Knight still has quite some time before he'll have to hang it all up. And within that time, let we'll me talk to you. Some exciting work by LA Knight. Could he be a top star? Could he be a WWE champion? Could LA Knight become that mega star that he labels himself as? And that. It's just a fact of life. Subscribe if you enjoyed, and thank you so much for watching. Well, J-Rock says this. Uh, there you have it, how LA Knight became the megastar. And J-Rock says, it's only going to get better from here. I like the slow build. They're doing it. I don't think they should have given him that money in the bank contract just yet. Just yet. I know it was not a popular decision, but the judgment day is on the rise. LA Knight is still on the rise. He said it himself, he's going to be a star with or without the title, all right? But I think Damian Priest needed that briefcase. Uh, it's, you know, it's it's adding, you know, an interesting dimension between he and Finn Balor's relationship in the Judgment Day. But J-Rock says this, uh, L.A. Knight, oh, he's on his way to the top of the company. He's going to be in the main event at WrestleMania sooner rather than later, all right? And so I'm looking forward to seeing what they do next with the megastar L.A. Knight. Post your comments down below. Let J Rock know which thought of his reaction to this video. No rhyme intended on that line. If you enjoyed the great ones' reaction, hit that like button, subscribe, and share. Make sure that you hit that bell so you can be notified when it is time to be electrified. Thank you for joining J Rock. Stay tuned for the next video. Mamba, GG, and Wakanda forever. Here be a smell. Yeah, what J-Rock is.